I definitely don't claim to be a professional, but if you don't know what you're doing, don't try this at home. So we just picked up the next project. I believe it's 1960s. We'll have to get a little more information on it. We're going to be doing a go-kart. So we're going to take this lawnmower, take the body off it, and we're going to body swap it with the bumper car. That's the game plan. This is the original seat that came out of the bumper car. As you can see, it's in rough shape. We're going to get that recovered. As you can see back in the day, I don't know if this was the 1960s, 1970s, but they riveted the vinyl on. And this vinyl is toast, and the seat brackets are pretty rusty. But, what I gotta do now is drill out all of those rivets, get this fabric off, and get it back to just fiberglass. That was a lot of rivets, but they're all drilled out. Get this thing all cleaned up and we'll ship it off to the upholstery. We had to get this seat bracket off so we can put it on the seat that goes inside the bumper car. So I took the seat off of the lawn tractor. Here's the mount right here going to mount it to this so we have some spring so we're not riding rigid we got a little cush going to make some sort of bracketry to brace this piece of fiberglass up because it's not all that rigid and we want it to hold up it's it's held up the test of time this long so let's help it out for the rest of its life so I'm going to get going on that That burning paint is smelly. I made it. I think I'm going to repurpose these original seat brackets. Turn them into back supports. A great idea.
Ship it. There, it's all secured to the base. Now we gotta ship it off to get upholstered. I like that. Hey, it's the last day of November, 2022, and uh, it's not snowing or it's kind of miserable out, but it's not raining, so I'm gonna start pulling the body off this lawn tractor. Never done this before, so we'll see how it goes. I like where this is going.
A lot of figuring out left to do, but I like it. So if I plan on getting any kind of speed out of this go-kart, I'm going to have to replace some pulleys. This pulley is 9 inch, and the one up front is 3 and a half. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this pulley, and I'm going to install a 4 inch pulley to get this spinning a little faster. We're going to start there and see how that goes. But this thing is thoroughly rusted on there, as you can see. So my plan is to use a steering wheel puller and some bolts. To bolt through it but I have to drill those holes out and see if I can get a nut on the bottom and there it is This is the old pulley, 9 inch, and this is the new pulley, the 4 inch. As you can see, there's quite a difference. Should make this thing go considerably faster. There's an RPM calculator online that I'm going to check to get the difference in the belt size and to see exactly how much faster this is going to go, but I think it'll do just fine. Good. I got the spring clip back on. There's a couple set screws underneath Allen head, so I'm going to tighten those up too, just for good measure. If I can find them. I know they're here somewhere. So I'm doing some calculating here, and I don't know if this is going to be accurate or not, but this is just how my brain's trying to figure this out. The keyway is right there, it's facing forward. I got the measuring stick on the axle. What happens is when I move this one foot, we have three rotations. One, two, three rotations, and then right there right there so three and a quarter rotations for one foot all right here's the math that i came up with i don't know if it's right or not but here it is three and a quarter rotations equals one foot of travel that means seventeen thousand one hundred and sixty rotations equals one mile at a thousand rpm the small pulley in the front is doing 388 the large one in the rear is doing 875. Uh, at full bore, 3500 is where these like to sit. The rear pulley is traveling at 3063 RPM. So 3063 RPM pretty much equals 5.6 minutes to do one mile. And that equals out to 10.714 miles per hour. Now I know that doesn't seem very fast and we may have to change that but the factory mower in six gear all the way full bore was only doing 4.76 miles an hour so we've more than doubled the speed at this point so we're gonna run with that and I mean let's face it I'm probably gonna wanna go faster but that's our starting point time to do the engine swap I gotta get everything over here disconnected get this old 12 horsepower off both in the new 21 horsepower engine So. Enjoy this time lapse. So 
So because I had it up on its side, all the oil started running out of what looks like the air filter in the carburetor. So I guess uh, we're just gonna drain the oil before we proceed and do anything else. By the looks of it, there was tons of fuel in this oil. So uh, obviously this thing at one point had a carburetor issue before I, before I got it running again. I did check the oil before I ran it. It had plenty of oil in it, but I maybe maybe didn't notice how thin the oil was. The good news is I only ran it for about 30 seconds or so. But either way, we're not using this anymore, so drain the oil out of it, move on. This is not the original engine that came on this. These came through with a 17 horse, I believe. Somebody put this 12 horsepower on it. I don't know if they blew up the original engine or not. But they have three different bolts. And this one's a carriage bolt, so there's no head on it. <laughs> and it's about this long. So uh, it's taken me forever to get out. I just wanted to share my frustration with you. Back to work. Okay, so let me turn you around. Ah, let's see if you can see that bolt. There it is. Can't get the nut off because it's at the top. When I try to pry up on the engine, the whole engine turns because somehow, even though there's no head on it, he got it threaded into the engine. Okay, moving on. Now, as you can see, we're going to need a new belt because this pulley is so small in the rear. Went from a 9 inch to a 4 inch. I mean, we have that much. So, if my calculations are correct, the belt needs to be about 8 inches shorter. So, I'm going to order a new belt for that. Okay, the engine's all mounted. I got it all bolted in. Uh, the next thing is this steering shaft. It angles back 
and believe it or not the dashboard is going to end up right in here somewhere so we need to somehow reverse this to angle this forward then we can put a couple u-joints in it and get the steering wheel on so we're going to unbolt this get it up on the bench and see what we have to do So I got the steering shaft removed. From what I can see, this has got a little bit of a bevel. It's tilted down, is what I'm basically trying to say. And this is angled back. Uh, we want that to be angled in the other direction. Maybe about the same amount of degrees. So my thought is, cut it. either plasma or whiz wheel try and keep along that radius edge flip it upside down weld it back on that'll give us the teeth in the up position and as far as this goes I don't think I'm going to be able to weld that just because it's cast I haven't had good luck welding cast in, in the past but I do have these three quarter inch bearings I believe they're called pillow block bearings. Yeah, say that again. Pillow block bearings. Got it. And I can finagle how to mount that once it's all done. I think that's going to be the game plan. Wish me luck. I want to bring you in close on this one. So what I'm doing with the angle grinder, just touching the surface. It takes many, many passes, but if you don't try and cut too deep, you can get the radius that you're looking for. It's a pretty good radius. It's obviously not going to be perfect, but it'll be good enough to flip over and re-weld back into place. So it does take many, many passes to get there, but the result is good. I could have tried to use a jigsaw, but this metal's pretty thick. Probably would have taken a while, so I'm going to continue on with this and see how it does. Remember, take your time. This is taking way more passes than I thought it was going to, but obviously it's going to be worth it in the end. there you have it. I don't know if I've ever told you how handy these battery operated angle grinders are. But the batteries last like two minutes. And then they're junk. Not a big fan. Get out the welder. the opposite of what it was. We got, we got a nice huge V-groove to weld up, so we should be in good shape. I'm going to try and put some tacks along the way to keep it from warping from the heat, and we're going to burn it in. Got it all tacked in place. 
Now I'm gonna run a couple beads, hopefully. Little 110 craftsman welder she does a pretty good job with this stuff obviously I'm gonna need to go over that once or twice more but it's a pretty solid weld I mean it looks a little boogery in the middle there probably because the fumes are getting to me and I gotta breathe but it's gonna hold that's for sure That's definitely all full of weld. I'll hit it real quick with the grinder, it'll be smooth. Also, the RPM of this thing never is near as good as the plug-in one. Basically, I guess I'm just saying, I like the plug-in one better. need to have two. That way I can keep a sanding disc on one and a cutting disc on the other. But when it really comes down to it, it's fairly annoying to do a lot of smoothing with that thing. Because it takes forever. Also, I hate these safety plugs. Took way too long. I'm not too fussy. That's definitely good enough. Probably never going to see that anyways since that goes down. This is the side you're going to see. We're going to grind that up, lay a bead on it, and be done with it. this bearing here. This gear needs to mesh right about at that angle. So my plan is to build a bracket that, that takes these two bolts, wraps around and goes underneath this mount, slides in. Mark the two holes in the cut line. Alright, here's the new brace that's going to hold the steering shaft in place. I got it all gusseted on either side. Structurally, this thing is sound. Is it pretty? No, not really, but 
you're not going to see it, and I'm okay with it. Put a fresh coat of black on the bracket, and I painted that as well to keep it protected from rust. Now it's time to reassemble it. Well, I think we're going to be able to make it all work with this ginormous engine in here, but I think it's going to fit under the cowl just fine. Well, I just found out this, this pillow block isn't a solid mount. I wasn't expecting that. That's not good. We're going to have to figure something else out. Did you guys know that these pillow bearings do this? I had no idea. I need a solid mounted one. Leave it down in the comments if you already knew that, because this is news to me. As you can see with this new pulley, the smaller pulley on here, this belt keep isn't really going to keep the belt in place. So we have to do some modifications to that. I'm going to take it over to the vise and bend it up. See if we can't get that a little better. That fits way better. Might have to go a little more snug than that, but we're going to give that a run and see how it goes. Alright. Let me get this old shifting bracket, shifting lever assembly out of here. Because the plan is, the new one's going to be cable driven. I'm currently in the process of taking out all these bolts. I already got a bunch of them out. But as you can imagine, and as you can see, they're rusted pretty badly. So, taking a little bit of effort. I suppose I could cut them out, but the impact gun is doing its job, so let's just go with it. Done! December 8th here in New Hampshire. 48 degrees and the sun is shining. Can't ask for anything better than that. I'm gonna wire brush this frame outside so I don't have to dust up the shop. Let me show you what's going on. That's the part that I wire brushed, and you can see the part that I didn't. Just trying to take all the heavy scaling off of this frame. Then I'll probably paint it with some rust converter and maybe some gloss black. I got a lot to go. I'm not going to bore you with the details. Can't see. Well, that's enough wire brushing for one day. It's uh, fairly pitted, but it's pretty solid still, and it's going to be just fine. seen a lot of bumps over the years just trying to get a, a nice curve on the front there she's got some dings I got it smoothed out pretty good there was one crack in the frame where it was originally welded this had cracked so I put some weld on it I'm about to grind it smooth as you can see it wasn't exactly welded perfect right from the factory but that's all right be the smoothest part on the whole thing. And there it is.
So I have the body set where it's going to reside. I like the looks of it. I think the spacing looks good. So I'm trying to figure out how to mount this thing. What I've come up with, surprise, surprise, is a hinge mount. So that's what I'm working on now. This whole thing should lift up like a dragster. Dragster, funny car, whatever they call it. I have to extend this one side of the hinge a little bit in order to be able to bolt it onto the lawnmower frame. So I've drilled a couple holes in it, cut it to length. Well, maybe a little bit long, but that's all right. And I clamped it with just a slight gap. So when I weld, it'll fill in. There's one, one to go. Done. Now that the body is in its final spot, you can see why I needed to reverse the steering shaft and face it forward. We have to somehow put a shaft on this and it'll adapt it down into that with a couple of U-joints. But, as you saw earlier, I didn't realize this was a pivot joint. So we're going to have to put some kind of a set screw or weld it or something. i got to figure that out still. gonna cut a piece of this five inch U channel I think it's called U channel I don't know but it's pretty thick but I gotta cut a piece of this about two inches inch and three quarters to, to put under the front end of the frame on the nose so let's get going So I welded this pillow block, put some weld in there, and I took out the grease circ and I put in a set screw. I sharpened it to the point. So hopefully this won't wobble around. We're going to install it and see how it works. I got that bearing all installed. It's actually pretty solid now. I'm very pleased. Next up. I'm going to cut a piece of angle iron to put up underneath these hinges, give it a little more support. That's next.
Perfect. Next order of business is to make a hood latch. So I got some gate hardware here. We're going to make a hood latch in the front. Got to modify it and put a spring on it. Let's go. Bet you don't have fuzzy drill bits like me. Here's the hood latch. So I just got out the old acetylene torch and we bent up the striker. I'm going to go fit it on the hood. I welded up a bracket for it, I put some springs and a little release. And then I bent the catch, welded it to the frame. Now it's got a latch. And there's the release. I just installed the new drive belt. This one is an 89 inch. So, so far all I did was the rear pulley swap from the 9 inch down to the 4 inch. And that requires an 89 inch belt. So we're working on where the steering wheel is going to be placed right now. The way the cowl sits, the way the hood sits, the steering wheel needs to be, I'm guessing, right about there, just a couple inches out from the steering shaft here. So what I've come up with is I bought some of these bevel gears. McMaster Car had them in stock. You pay a little bit of money, but they have exactly what I need. So we're going to put one there, and then this other bevel gear with a short steering shaft to the steering wheel. It's going to make a 90 degree turn. And then we're going to mount the steering wheel right there. The placement with the body on is almost perfect. So what I have to do is drill and put some set screws in here to hold this shaft on. Same with this one down here. i got to put some set screws on that. And then we have to make a mounting plate for the back of the steering wheel. That's what we're working on now. In order to keep these gears in place in a 90 degree fashion, I have this 4 inch square tubing. I'm going to cut the top and the side off. We're going to drill a hole through the back. The shaft will go through and get pinned. Also the steering shaft from the bottom is also going to do the same thing. That will hold the gears from moving around and it will keep them in a 90 degrees. Then we can put some mounting brackets on and run some kind of bracketry to the floor to keep everything solidly mounted. I guess it cut. That's what I'm looking for. So that's what I'm looking for for a bracket. I'm going to take my Amazon marker, mark the holes, and hopefully drill them to where I need them. Wish me luck. These markers are actually very, very handy.
and you can kind of see where I'm going. I just got to find the center of that hole and the center of that hole. So this is where I want to take my time with the old automatic center punch. Take my time, use the old eyeball 5000, and try and get this one directly in the center. Not always easy to do. I think I got it. I think I got them both. Looks good to me. Time to drill. And this is what we were looking for. Ninety degree. Perfect. Weld some gussets on the side here and it'll be done. As you can see, I'm just tapping holes to put the set screws in the gears. I went and I got some quarter twenty set screws. As you can see when I drilled the hole for the set screw, I also drilled a little dimple in the steering shaft. So you line those two up and set it and forget it. There we go. Done. So the steering wheel bolts on with those three bolts. I was able to find a two inch washer. I machined out the middle so it would fit on this shaft. We're going to weld it on there. As you can see, I got the spray booth set up, ready to spray. I'm just making up a mounting bracket for this pillow block bearing to add a little more support to the steering wheel. I'm going to weld that up and get it in place. We've got it all mounted and welded up. I'm going to give it a coat of paint. That's where the steering wheel bolts to. Solidly mounted. Good to go. Next order of business get the shifter cable mounted. 
I measured this cable. We have two and three quarter inches of travel. And here's the shifter. I also measured that just slightly over two and three quarter inches of travel. So hopefully we can make it work. So what I did, I took a regular 5 16 nut, hex nut, went over to the lathe and spun it down to make a shoulder. So the shoulder is going to thread on to a 5 16 nut. This is going to be the shifter cable bracket. And that shoulder will fit right in that hole, so we'll have a nice snug fit. So when the cable does the adjusting... It'll be nice and snug, and there won't be too much slack. At least that's the theory. I got the shifter cable bracket all welded in right here I have the other end mounted to the transmission I'm gonna try and put this cable on that ought to do So I went and I picked up the seat pan from the upholstery shop before they covered it to do a final fitment and it turns out I have to trim it. It doesn't fit the seat position as much further back than it originally was so it's going to hit the walls in there. So I have to trim the seat pan. So I have to remove the foam and trim. Good times. I just had to cut an inch and a half off either side. Uh, it's actually going to be mounted up about an inch higher than that. But the problem was because the back goes around, it wasn't able to push back all the way. I think that's going to be about as far back as we go. And you can't really tell because it's not bolted in, but there's enough room to put the battery back there and maybe even the fuel tank. We'll see. I just spent the good portion of two hours fabricating up some seat brackets. She has some spring. I got to finish welding and paint, but we should have plenty of room. currently working on the body mount brackets. I got some flat stove bolts, 3 8 to bolt those in. And then those are going to go ahead and bolt down on the frame right into there. Nice and tight. That's four. Looks like there's nine brackets altogether. And I don't have enough L brackets, so I gotta make some more. I'm 
using these construction brackets. They're not quite as thick as these, but I have five really thick ones and the rest, the other four will be just fine. I got all the brackets in and mounted. You can kind of see the ones in front there. I do have to trim the tabs. I'm also going to grind them in a rounded fashion so you don't catch your legs on them. So now that the body is mounted, I'm going to work on getting the gas and brake pedals mounted. And then we got to work on moving that clutch forward. That's what we're working on now. Drilling some holes to mount the gas and brake pedal. A little mock-up of where I think the pedals are going to be placed. That way the room for them to clear the engine and the tire. So this is what I came up with for the brake side anyways. As you can see, I have the spring mounted, I welded on a little spring perch here. And this would be the push rod for the trans brake. So you step on the brake, pushes the brake, and then it automatically springs back. Now we got to get the throttle side working. Now we have throttle cable. Can you see that mechanism there? Yeah, better view on that side. Now I just gotta figure out how to get the return spring on this side. And this is good to go. All right, we finally got this all assembled. Just about to weld it on to the cart. This comes very close to rubbing the front tire and so doesn't this, so. Where we mount this is going to be pretty pivotal, pun intended. I think we got it. There's the throttle cable. So the cable just barely misses the tire. Even with the tire turned, it still clears, which is good. And the brake pedal just barely misses this engine cover. And there's even room inside the car. That is the factory brake rod. This one right here. It pushes into the back, into the brake. And that activates the brake. Well now it's a little bit too short to go all the way up to this pedal. So, I have this old chute crank from an old snowblower. I turn the end down on the lathe. So now it fits in the brake pedal. So we just have to cut and weld those two together and we'll have brakes. I like to grind these almost to a point. That way when you're welding together, you have plenty of room to put weld down material down to hold it together. 
you can butt these up against each other and weld it around that way it's just not as strong and whereas this is responsible for stopping I think I'm gonna do all that I can you want to weld it so there's a gap in between them that way you can fill the rest of that in with weld We got a nice good bead all the way around. We have brakes. This is the original parking brake rod. So when the brakes are applied, this will move in the welded on here, it'll move backwards. And then you just have to lift it up into a detent to hold the brake in place. That's what we're working on now. So this is what I've come up with. I made this little bracket like keyhole. This is the parking brake rod. Slides in there. Let me get this glove out of the way for you. It slides in there and it rides on this little groove. When you need to set the brake, you push the brake and then lift up on this and it'll lock it in. And then when you push the brake again, gravity unlocks it. That's how it works. The brake rod assembly is all done. Goes all the way to the back. And if you want to set the parking brake, you step on the brake. And you lift up on that. And it holds the brake in the down position. And all you need to do to release it, step on the brake again. To mount the battery box, I took one of the old brackets that came off where the old seat used to go, where the old battery used to go, flipped it upside down, screwed it, zip tied it, and it's going to sit right there. Just drawing out a template for where I think I'm going to put everything for the dashboard. So I'm here modifying the shifter. This shifter came out of my father-in-law's hot rod and I had to make a new plate because these are all the detents for all the gears in the automatic the turbo 350 I believe but here in the go-kart we only need the one so these are the forward gears and when you get here it's gonna stop you at neutral you're gonna have to push the button to shift into reverse and that's what we're working on all right, I got the plate for the detent all made up, working perfectly. Now I'm making some angle brackets. Some brackets to mount it out of angle iron, all welded up. Going to mount it on there, and then we're going to weld it over there onto the frame. I got the shifter brackets all done, and I got it tacked into place. We're going to check fitment with the hood closed. The position is now perfect, and I only had to grind the welds off once. This is the original shift knob that came on the custom shifter. I don't know what it is, but it looks to me like a faucet handle, so I went out and bought another one. Now we got to make a slug so we can mount it on the shifter. I found this chunk of aluminum left over from one of my projects. It just so happens to barely fit in there really snug. So, I can use that and epoxy it in. And we'll have ourselves a new shift knob. Now i got to get to machining this so it fits over the gear shifter rod.
Just took it out of the lathe. All polished up. We will JB weld that together. And we got to drill a hole and make the push button work. But that's going to go right there, and that's going to be our shifter. Okay, I got the shift knob finished, all mounted, fresh coat of paint, one set screw, one really, really shiny buffalo nickel as a push button. a little preview of what the seat's going to look like. I'm here at the upholstery shop, aka mom's house. Got the sewing machine set up. Hey mom. Well, this build is coming along nicely. Uh, there's way, way more footage than I thought there was going to be. So we're going to end this episode here. Um, hoping only one more episode, but we might have to split it into two. I mean, we still have a lot left. Uh, we still have body work. We still have to get the engine running. Uh, fuel tank needs to be mounted. All the wiring. The dashboard needs to be made. Uh, the seats need to be upholstered. All the upholstery needs to be done. So there, there's a bit left. But I'm excited. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.